Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoymi, a.k.a. Massage Nerd, and tonight we have a special guest. Her name is Stephanie Beck, owner of SRB Solution, and she's been working for over 10 years in the sales and marketing as a massage and spa industry professional with the top name companies including Biotone, Script Companies, and Bombatel Incorporated. Stephanie has written in-depth protocols and taught several classes for massage and spa products throughout the U.S. She has served as a published guest columnist for Massage Today and Marketing Matters. Stephanie has also served as part of the Education Committee for iSpa. In, jo in January 2011, she and her husband created SRB Solutions, an online marketing and social media consulting business, utilizing her skills for the massage, spa, chiropractic, and wellness industries. Customers of SRB Solutions achieve quicker results due to years of experience and understanding the needs for the customers. We know how to connect, connect with your um, customers and, and get the desired results. She and her husband live in San Diego, California, and if you have any questions about social media or online marketing, visit her website at www.srbsolution.net or email her at s back at srbsolutions.net. Welcome tonight, Stephanie. Hi, welcome. Thank you for yep, having me. Thanks. So how did you get this bug in here to get this SRB Solutions um, started then? Well, you know, after 15 years of working with people and throughout the years, I've had to talk to people about their marketing plans and what they were doing. Like when we were working for certain manufacturers, I was in charge of finding distributors. And... Over the years, just talking to people, and one of the things that they just kept saying is, you know, oh, I just wish I knew what to do, or I wish I could have someone that would help me put together a full marketing plan. And I would help them as much as I could. Obviously, I had a full-time job. <laughs> and it just, it just started really, you know, the passion just kept building and building and building. I thought, you know what, I need to go out there and help more people. I want to be able to help more people. You know, my, my true passion, my true desire, my inspiration is to help small business owners, especially like massage therapists, uh, refine their marketing process so that they can achieve their ultimate purpose, whatever that purpose may be. And this way I get to get to really do that and step out. It was a, it was a big change for me. So I'm, I'm happy we did it, though. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a nice, uh, fun walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what, what I've noticed about the average massage therapist, they're great at massage, but sometimes they don't have the skills yet with the marketing stuff. So exactly. is, is that what you kind of found out, too, in the beginning? or? Ab absolutely. And especially in the last five to seven years, you know, with the onslaught of social media in general, find a lot of therapists that they kind of want to take those steps, but they're not sure. And we've had a big influx in the number of graduates going through massage schools. And a lot of the massage schools are concentrating on the techniques and then some of the students are missing the business aspect, how to build their business and where do they find the customers. And, and you know, that's a, that's a real need, what I, what I kept hearing time and time again. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and what's, what's frustrating, just because I teach at a massage school, a lot of times the instructors don't spend too much time in business because they realize the average massage student, when they get out in the field, they usually work for somebody for a while, and then they're just losing that information. And so it's frustrating. So. Sure. And I, I think for the longest period of time, I, and you still hear it some today where people are saying, oh, I just use word of mouth. And more and more, it's, it, you know, the, the new word of mouth is social media. It's a great way to do it. And there's a lot of, like, free databases to use. So, um, you know, it, it needs to go that direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the problem is things are changing so fast, too. you you got to find somebody like you that's keeping up, and, up to date on everything, too. So. Right. Like, yeah. you know... Um, that is true. About the time you get something figured out, they go and change it on you. So, um, but yeah, and I know a lot of people complain. Like when the last uh, upgrade on um, Facebook, there was a lot of chatter about, oh, why did they change it? Why did they change it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, I. I embrace change. I like change, and and the changes that we're making, I saw them as as pretty positive. And there was a lot of really good benefits to the changes they were making, and I thought it was a very good step forward. But um, most of us are are very happy being in that same spot all the time, and and um, 
you know, so I, it was funny because today I attended another webinar about social media and last week um, my husband, my business partner, Brian, and I were in Las Vegas for a big social media conference. Um, three solid days of being at the computers and <laughs> learning all the new stuff. So it was, um, it, it's good and I love it. That, that, that is that is where I love to spend my time. So I, that's just more confirmation that I'm in the right place. <laughs> yep. And, and did you hear recently that um, Google Buzz is shutting down? I did. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't surprise me. There has been some uh, little scandals going on there or, you know, scuttlebutt about it. And so um, it's. I, I didn't get a whole lot of time to play on Google Buzz, but... Um, it just never took off. They did. I, I. I just think that they didn't do the right type of marketing to make it, make it take off. And, and what I've re been reading is they're kind of backstepping a little bit, trying to just redefine a few things and make those good instead of throwing everything out at you once. So, yeah. You know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think Twitter, Twitter, and stuff are here to stay for a while. So. Definitely, yeah. and, and it's hard to compete. You know with. When they've got such a strong following, um, it you know the fact that you've got this time last year between Facebook and Twitter, you had 700 million users, and just on Facebook alone this year, there's over 800 million users active on Facebook monthly. <clears throat> and that's not even people with double or triple accounts, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how do social media tools work then? Well, the tools of social media are things like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. And as small business owners, we use those tools to really like find and connect with people. Um, social media is a is like I said, it's the new word of mouth. People love to to get on and use these tools to connect with friends, college old college friends, classmates, family members. Um, I know that my 94 year old grandmother is on Facebook and and she loves it because she can stay connected with all the grandkids now. Um, <clears throat> So you have people getting on there for different reasons, but uh, what happens then is that those people will, um, I'll start to see, oh, well, gosh, my, my friend from high school, she likes ABC clothes. Well, I've never heard of ABC clothes, so then I'll go and I'll, and I'll search because we have the same interests and we're friends. So it's, it's a really great way for small business owners um, to, to utilize. You, you never really know where that link is coming from. Um, you know, so you get people coming there all the time um, using you know, groups that are within Facebook and LinkedIn, making comments on those, getting followers, getting fans. Um, and the biggest thing to keep in mind is that you're just there to interact with them, to be social. Right, so it's very important that you keep the content um, friendly and connecting. Um, you know, because we, 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 as people who are on there using it, we are on there too because we want to be connected. We want to feel like we're counted. We want to feel that that, that we're liked. Um, it, it gives us a warm feeling when you make a comment and several people post and or they do likes or um, you know you post photographs. You're on there to share. So those are the types of things that um, when we're on there as business owners we need to keep that in mind. That, that we're there to be a um, an informational source or to be sharing that we want to be connecting it isn't about you know spamming in your face you know buy this buy this buy this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think they'll ever have a dislike button oh, I don't think so I've never I've never disliked anything um, <laughs> I just <laughs> And what do you think the best uh, um, social media tools to start off with? Well, you know, the biggest ones are Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you've got over 800 um, million users, active users on Facebook. Um, Twitter, um, gosh, I forgot the numbers. I'm drawing a complete blank. But 
I mean, it's big now. I can't remember. Do you remember how many people are on Twitter right now? No, not offhand. Yeah, okay. But it's, um, but those are your two big ones. Uh, most everyone starts off on Facebook just because it is one of the larger ones. But it really, you have to do some research first. Um, it may be that from a professional standpoint, like if you're a manufacturer, you might find that more of your target market, like chiropractors or doctors or physical therapists, are on LinkedIn more so than what they're on Facebook. So what I always advise people to do is to do the research first, spend some time on the different sites, um, and don't try to get involved in all of them at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pick, pick two you know, that, that, that you like, um, and find out where your customers are spending the time. And if you don't have customers yet, or your ideal customer, um, a really good trick is to go on Google and pull up your competitor site and see uh, Google your competitor's name and see where they're spending their time. So if you see that they're spending most of their time on LinkedIn, well, gosh, that would make me want to go spend some time on LinkedIn and find out you know, what groups they belong to and what's going on. <laughs> Not that you're trying to take their customers, just seeing what they do. I mean, it makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, because you can only learn from your competitors kind of thing. So Exactly. Yeah. There's also some good tools, like if you want to do um, quick searches on Facebook, I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but it's um, www.fbinstant.net. Have you ever used that, Ryan? Nope. Okay. If you ever want to do like quick searches on Facebook, uh, again, it's www.fb for Facebook, okay. instant.net. Instant and that'll pull up um, pages, posts, and events from the last, I want to say, 30 days. And you put in a topic, and it's free. And you put in the topic that you're searching for. Like if you wanted to search to, for chiropractors on Facebook, you could type in chiropractors, and it would pull up all the listings, um, all the pages that are chiropractors, all the posts from chiropractors or pertaining to ch chiropractors, and then events. So that's kind of a good th good way to, to, to know too, real quick, if you have um, your ideal customer, your target market is on Facebook. Um, it's still a work in progress. They're, they're updating it all the time, so it doesn't have a complete listing, but it's pretty good for just doing some general searches. So that's kind of a really cool tool to use too for Facebook. And then Google has something like that too, and then throughout the whole web, because I actually search for myself. All I just enter my name, um, and then also Massage Nerd in there just to see if uh, anybody else are posting things about me or anything else. So you know. <laughs> oh, 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 that that means you probably see all the good stuff I say. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the name of that service though. Um, what is it? Um, but it's it's if you just do Google and search or something, I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. But um, it's it's like the hot. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably think of it later. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and um, do you think um, Facebook has any kind of competitors right now? Facebook. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Google Plus came on the scene. Everyone thought they were going to give them a real run for their money. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, they just they just came out of the beta, you know, the beta test. They've only been what live on the market for about three months. So, um, you know, Google certainly has some strong followings, but I just don't know what's going to happen there. Um, at the last social media conference, when they said held up the hands, we had we had about ninety in the room. Said how many people have been on Google Plus lately, and there was about three people that raised their hands. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, can't really think of anyone that's that's really coming on the scene strong that's going to give them a real run for their money. Um, and and with the recent changes and the things that they're doing, I think that uh, they're trying to stay ahead of the game too. Yeah, and I, I know the competitor kind of is friend feed for Twitter. Have you heard of okay. you know? But I don't. I don't really use that either. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just again haven't. I, I kind of stay with what what I know works for right now and let things 
you know, like Google Plus, yeah, it was on there from the beginning, uh, but until they get some things worked out and the bugs worked out, um, I'm going to kind of, you know, be aware of it and play on it once in a while, but I wouldn't introduce any of my clients to it until I know for sure you that know, it's working. Do you think the plus button has caught on yet, or? When, when I you don't can, think so. Yeah, when I, you, it's, it's, it's getting there, um, but it's, it, it, I would say the next ninety days, you'll see you'll see a lot more of it. Yeah, because um, what they're even going to be doing, it sounds like they're going to be putting it on ads, even so the Google AdSense ads, they're going to be putting on that too, so you can even. That's just weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're on a few now. Like when you when you go and 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 do your searches, you can find them on there here and there. But it's um, yeah, it'll it'll yeah. It'll be big eventually, I think, but it's uh, just going to take a while to catch yeah. up. And then I've heard of Yelp, but I really haven't messed around with it much. What What is Yelp? Yelp, um, Yelp really works well for um, local businesses, but it's a place to get reviews and to, um, it's, you go on there, you search for specific, now you can search all over the country, but from from a, any local business, if you're not on Yelp, you should be. That That is a big one. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, you set up the account and of course people, clients who've, who've visited your massage, um, you would encourage them to leave reviews, um, but you can find reviews on anybody. And um, and that's it, it's it's kind of like a GPS of the <laughs> <laughs> of the internet, I guess. Yeah. Is it almost yeah. like a Better Business Bureau in a way too, or? Well, yes and no because of course um, anybody can leave a post and you see them all there. Um, it's really hard to remove a bad review too. So like if you get someone who's mm. uh, vindictive or. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it can get really tricky, so we do we do offer services for people to help them with their Yelp accounts um, and Google Places and that type of thing. But reviews are huge. I mean, that's how Google does a lot of their rankings for your website. Is based on uh, reviews go a long way. So the more customers that that you can get saying I like SRB Solutions because they rock yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> she got me 20 new customers yeah. last week. Uh, yeah, yeah, so any, anything like that is great. Yeah, and then keeping up with Google algorithms and everything else is frustrating because I, I just, just recently, my website just took a hit and stuff just because they changed things and how they index things. So it's like, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the crazy part is, hey, if, if you don't like it, just wait a second because it'll change. Yeah. <laughs> switch it up on you so you've completely got to redo it. We had we had a client that we launched a website for and was doing great, 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 page one, and then all of a sudden overnight, shoom, down to page seven. Oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to completely revamp, um, it, you know, and it was one of those fast and furious, and 30 days later, it's back on page one. But, you know, if, you, if you're just not paying attention or you don't know what to do, it's... Um, it, it, it can get really confusing, and that's why we're constantly taking webinars. Like I said, we were in for three days straight with all the new Panda changes. Oh, yes, <laughs> the Panda. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> bad yeah. Panda, bad Panda. <laughs> bad Panda, bad Panda. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, um, even on YouTube, they're going to be um, rolling out. It's called uh, Cosmic Panda. Have you heard of that yet? Uh, yeah, it's still yeah. way in the beta stages of that, but um, but so many people are not using it yet because, especially um, YouTube partners, because the ads don't show up on their um, channel pages and stuff, so they haven't built that in yet. So, right. but but it does look really slick, though. It's like it's really cosmic. <laughs> well, it, and there's some pretty cool stuff that you can do now on YouTube. Like you can you can create a a, a working website. You know that that mimics your own website on YouTube. So there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with it. But uh, um, it, so YouTube uh, YouTube works a lot like Facebook as far as subscribers and posts and comments and that type of thing. 
so. Yeah, but what I've noticed about YouTube, it doesn't change as fast. That's yeah, fast, but that's true. yeah, <laughs> that's the nice thing about it because it. Did, although, <laughs> although, well, on on YouTube though, you get you get a lot of things immediately indexed. Where on you know regular Google and postings, it takes forever for Google sometimes to index uh, when you make changes <clears throat> yep. on your website. Yep. Yeah, because that's that's where I'm getting a lot of my traffic too. Is when I put my videos up, and then they um, sometimes they'll go on Google, um, and then um, people view them that way too. So it's so nice. Yeah, everyone thinks Google is the number one search engine. Yet, you know, uh, some some internet people will say YouTube is actually the number one search engine because given a choice, people will always gravitate towards the video first before they go. To yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and the nice thing is I'm not a great writer, so that's why I decided to go more with the video route. So that's why I found my little niche. So. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple uses, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are those people that, um, like you said, you're you're not a great writer, and yeah. but yet they can they can talk. They're comfortable talking in front of a camera, and they're very natural, and um, so it makes sense. Um, and there's new. Um, we have a new video email service. So now you can send, instead of the link, we can send the actual, we do video blasts. So we can do uh, video emails as well. Yep. And then Phyllis in the chat asks, uh, why would you want to create a website on YouTube versus put a link to your website? Well, th th that's a great question. Actually, it's to keep people interactive on as, as a subscriber on your YouTube. So you still want it to link in to, to your website, but uh, by keeping them there, keeping them active, and taking up, taking up, because there are some people who don't want to leave YouTube, they want to stay on YouTube, they do their searches on YouTube, so you're fulfilling that market and that need. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think the, um, they, they did some stats, like the average person stays 15 minutes on YouTube, so it's right. just, that's insane. <laughs> your site uh, on YouTube, the better it is for you. Your rank, your ratings go up, your rankings go up. So it's um, that that's why you would want to do it. Yep, and then it, they also say um, whenever somebody uh, likes your videos or comments on your videos, and they want you to interact too, so they throw all that into there too. So there's, exactly. I, I mean, some no wonder everybody has a d d d d d d d. You know. <laughs> exactly. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it seems like the younger generation—they're just used to it. But as the older generation, it's a little bit harder to adapt to this fast-paced market. So. <laughs> well, and, and, and you know, there's a lot of systems too that will put uh, websites on all of your social media. Like we can add, we we can we can make. Um, we can make websites on Facebook, we can make websites, you know, so there's there's multiple uses for it. And then there are some systems that we that we use that will do a post to your YouTube, send out a tweet, send out, and do it all at once. So all you have to do is that one-stop shop, so to speak. Yep. <laughs> and you can schedule them uh, like 30 days in advance so that they, you know, you, you set them up. Um, so that they all go out at specific times, and um, that that's very handy for any business owner, so that you're not having to uh, um, spend hours upon hours on the social media sites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do do you recommend um, linking, like let's say Facebook and Twitter and stuff together, and just um, t tweeting in one thing, and then I'll go to Facebook, or what's your belief behind those things? Well, it, again, it really depends on you know. Your posts. If your posts are normally the one to two sentences, because we all know twi Twitter or tweets have to be um, 140 characters. So um, um, I, I kind of like to keep them separate, um, but I have a program that will allow me to set up um, a Facebook, a Twitter, or, or tweet, a uh, post on YouTube, or you know, to to uh, sub subscribers. Um, so that's handy for me. 
uh, for most business owners. I do see some people like like I have my Twitter account linked to linked on LinkedIn because um, most of the things that I do on LinkedIn I can automatically go out as a tweet. Um, I know that we have one of our customers that has the uh, Twitter account linked up to their Facebook. I, I didn't do that just because I, I do several different types of postings and I have a whole other strategy for my Twitter account. So. And then yeah. how, how long w would you say the effects of social um, media stuff last, any kind of posts that you have? Because what, what I've noticed for myself is just in the first couple hours, that's when you get the most traffic. And then after that, it kind of dies. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, your expiration dates on social media are like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, if you, if you think about it, you know, 800 million users just on Facebook, um, you know, with everybody posting and making comments because those are active people, of course your data is going to get old quick. You know, so you, you do, you can't just set it and forget it and go, oh, I've made my post for the month. Uh, no. No, you should be doing <laughs> daily posts. <laughs> and, 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 and how many posts is too much a day, would you say? or? Um, well, sometimes, you, well, you, and you can always tell, like, after the convention, there's about a gazillion pictures that get posted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and that type of thing. Um, I try not to do more than three a day, just because you don't want to wear somebody out. Um, you don't want to get blocked on the news feeds, you know, from from your fans. Um, uh, sometimes I do one in the morning and one at one at night, just to. And and there are other days where I just do one a day. Um, now tweets are different. A lot of t a lot of internet marketers will say three tweets a day. Um, um, but at least if you're doing at least one, shoot for one, because that's what I find with massage therapists. They're intimidated. What am I going to say? How you know? And so I, I just say, start. Make it easy on yourself. Start with one post a day, because that that's a that's a good um, judge or, or, or a good goal to have. And and somebody I know um, that's on Twitter. I mean, they post posted ten things in one hour. It's just it's like bye. I'm 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 gone. <laughs> connected with Facebook and Twitter, connected with LinkedIn, if you just were to do two posts on Facebook and two posts on on LinkedIn or if you do a retweet or something, you know, yeah, you could. You could you could totally be um, sabotaging your own social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta think you gotta think it through. <laughs> yep. And and have, have you played around with the new um, timeline thing for Facebook? I liked it from the beginning, um, and and I think uh, I don't know if they've opened it up to everybody yet. Yeah, I don't um, think so. But there's some kind of app where you can do it beforehand and stuff. And right, because right. I, I haven't played around with, I haven't done anything yet with it. So, well, what I like about it is you can. It gives you a real easy way to go back and and evaluate, you know, uh, your post from you know, from the time that you started with Facebook. And you can choose to feature, or if you've got a post and you're like, oh, why did I say that? Mm -hmm. You can, <laughs> you know, immediately take it off, but it's much easier to, to find it, I, you know, I found, at least. Um, and, and I like the new insights for the Facebook pages. I know that's changing the subject a little bit. You didn't ask me about that. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that's a lot better than before then, or...? Oh, I think it's huge because you have you can now see who's talking about and which posts they're talking about from your Facebook page. Um, now the trick is you have to have at least thirty people talking about your posts so that you can see those results. But um, I I think it's awesome because you now and it even breaks down into more detail, especially if you do any paid advertising on Facebook. Um, with your pages, it gives you a lot more detail. So, I have, have you looked at that? Do you um, do you use the insights at all on Facebook on your page? Um, sometimes, but I, I'm so focused on the insights on YouTube. It seems because I I focus on that a lot more because I got a lot more traffic on there. And, right, yeah. that makes sense. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then um, uh, YouTube also has a beta form of it now too. It's awesome. It's even ten times better than the the one now. So you, you can opt okay. into that beta form of it. It's, I, yeah. And I, why do they call it beta? What does beta stand for? Do you know? It's like. <laughs> think the most important part of any marketing campaign would be? The most important part, I think, is content. You know, that old saying, content is king, and it's it's still true. Um, the biggest thing that, that I've seen, and we've helped a lot of companies with, are having to change and adapt through, you know, different eras. When I first started over 10 years ago, it was all about your product and your service. So you could talk about products or you could talk about your service all day long because, um, you know, we didn't have the internet and, um, well, it was over 10 years ago, but uh, <laughs> that it started. But, uh, but when the internet became available and then as more companies got involved with it, you know, information wasn't wasn't such a big deal. Like you could, you can find anything about anything on Google. Um, so now companies are having to change their content to reflect more of that, I call it the what's in it for me. Uh, you have to be very specific with how you're going to help a customer. You know, what it is, how the customer is going to benefit from your, from, from your product or service. Um, and, and if you start off giving them that information, you know, like, uh, um, you know, cause, because let's face it, if you just, on your website, you just have information on, yeah, I, I, I offer deep tissue massage, Swedish massage, we do trigger point and hot stone. Really? Well, so does the 999,000 other <laughs> massage <laughs> therapists out there, right? But if, but it, let, let's say how, how you do it might be a little bit different or how I'm going to benefit, going to benefit me as a customer. Like, um, you know, I specialize in back pain. Do you have lower back pain? Um, you know, the, lead with why it is you do what you do and how that's going to help them um, is is the biggest thing. Then you can tell them about all your experiences and how wonderful you are and how great you are. Um, but you, in order to hook them, in order to get their attention, you really have to lead with the that how I'm going to help you first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's considered the generation Y too. Um. If you listen sure. to the generation, I mean, it's more the what can I get out of this kind of thing, and yep. You know. Exactly, and and because they've grown up with having everything at their fingertips, and right here and now, um, you need to make sure that you know all your systems do work and that they load quickly. Um, you know, and 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 customers, you know, massage therapists are, uh, that that we talk to are, you know, where am I going to get content? How am I going to make this happen for me? Um, a really good, uh, a really good place to go on the net to find content. If you're, if you're struggling with content is stumbleupon.com. I like to, I like to use that sometimes if I'm going through a uh, a slump, so to speak, and I, I need I need to uh, need to go out there and find some <laughs> article information, <laughs> you know, a topic, or <laughs> looking for a link to post or something like that. But um, have you ever tried that? Stumbleupon.com. Yep, yep, it's pretty cool. Yep. Yep, so. and the, and then what was um you um Yahoo just sold something not too long ago. Um, I can't remember what service they had and stuff and. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> again. There's so much out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll, um, I think. Um, well, I can't remember now what I was going to say, but uh, yeah, I, I'll think of it here. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, can therapists submit their own content on social media sites then? And absolutely, yeah. but. You know, the biggest thing, again, to keep in mind is, you know, you're not just out there saying, oh, I'm so great and wonderful. Uh, you definitely want to make sure to put in there um, what it is that, that you're going to do for them, how you're going to help them. Um, 
and and you know another good thing to do is if if they have you know testimonials or positive positive customers who gave them good information from an email or something like that you can post that or encourage your customer to go on your website or go uh, not on your website but on your uh, Facebook page or to go to your personal Facebook uh, account and, and make the post there um, and have your customers be the uh, to tooting your horn for you I guess <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know and the biggest thing is to really keep it fresh because like we said short 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 um, expiration dates on anything social media so you know you really can't again do a post a month and expect to expect to have results um, and, and 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 if people make comments this is something that I found interesting when working with a client she was getting all these posts but then she wasn't going back in and and liking them or, or commenting back and she was like oh I didn't know you could do that um, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like if uh, Ryan, you and I were having a conversation, and I asked you a question, and then I walked off while you were answering it. <laughs> right? Yep. So it was, it, it, it's like that, and so you have to you have to make sure that that you're commenting back, that you're engaging them, because otherwise, you know, they, they'll be gone. They're moving on to someone else. So. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, people just don't, don't know, uh, and. and uh, so it's important. It's important to know all the all the social. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and is there anything out there to help all the emails people get on a regular basis? To help all the emails. Yeah, because I I mean I, I get hundreds of emails a day just to kind of condense them, weed through them easier, or because that's my problem is answering all the emails I get all the time. So. Well, you do have autoresponders, so you can set it up for people so that. You know, you can, it, it can sound very personal. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with um, with a lot of our, like our custom Facebook pages all come with autoresponders. The websites come with autoresponders. Uh, you can even set it up for Twitter. And um, uh, several of the, um, of the programs, there's, oh, I don't know, Hootsuite and... Um, we use monster follow-up but yeah when when people respond back it ought to, you can set it up and you can have several auto responders so you can keep a conversation <laughs> kind of a, a conversation going um, but that is you know it, it's really helpful for the business owner so that you can um, uh, um, keep track of it the other thing I do on on my Facebook and any of my social media when you first log in um, you know, you can get an email from from anything. So when you do a post, when someone else does a post, if someone else does a post on something you like, it'll automatically be set up to send you an email. And the first thing I do is unclick all of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a hundred different emails telling me, you know, that that uh, Ryan commented and I commented back and my husband commented on something. I, you know, no, I don't want to, you know. No, so you can go in there into your settings and adjust so that you're not getting bombarded with a bunch of emails that you don't need updates on. Yep, you because know, a long time ago I turned all that off too, just because I was so frustrated with that too. It's <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's like crazy. <laughs> um, especially if you go to a convention and then you come back and your your emails just packed with all this stuff. It yeah. Um, and, and if you have personal friends who are business associates and then they also like your page or you like someone else's page, you could get, be getting email, you know, two emails that say the exact same thing um, because they've made a comment on their page and they also made a comment on their personal. Yeah. <laughs> so turn all that stuff off because it, it'll, it'll make your life easier. And, and with my wife, she only has around 100 friends on her Facebook account and that's all she wants. But she gets her emails, um, any kind of um, her friends post and everything else. So, but exactly. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's why I say I, yeah. I unclick all those buttons. I don't get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> forget it. But but she even has a button up in the corner that says "Find Friends." Just because Facebook wants her to have more friends and stuff. Oh, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and but you know what I I like is the new subscribers. So you don't actually have to. 
know, you can really keep your friends to be just those close friends um, and family members um, and, and just make people subscribers instead of having to make them friends anymore. So that's a that's a really cool feature. I, I like that, that that they changed that for Facebook. Yeah. And then why do some traffic from social media websites convert poorly, would you say? Um, users of like the social media sites, they're generally arriving at your site because they want to see what others are talking about. Um, or they're interested in what's on your site. And in most cases, you know, they're coming there, they're, they haven't made a decision to buy, they're not looking to buy anything, and I think that's the biggest mistake people make, is they just post a bunch of information on buy my product, buy my product, you know, I have such a great service, this is all wonderful. And I think that's why they do so poorly, is that they forget that you don't know where your new traffic is going to be coming from. These are just leads, so you need to communicate with them and have content on there that's informational, because it is a social site. So. If you, if you and I were having the conversation and all you kept doing was just telling me, you know, to, to, to you know, have, have me make some videos for me. I'll, I'll make videos for you. Stephanie, I'll make videos for you. So it's like, <laughs> hey, can you tell me a little bit more about what it is that you're doing? Um, so I, I, I find where that's, that's the biggest mistake and where, where people, you know, fumble or, or, or don't, that aren't as successful because they, they need to be more informational. You need to be an informational site first on the social media sites. And is SEO that big, would you say? SEO? Yep. Um, SEO, SEO is huge with, with your website as far as making it making it rank and, and making sure that it ranks. Um, now, you can't do just SEO alone. Uh, most of the time, a lot of the SEO firms are incorporating what they call S, uh, SMO, which is social media optimization now, because there's so much of your, that happens on your social media that can link back to your website, so again, to help increase the rankings, because the more, the more traffic, the more links you have coming back to your website, the higher your rankings are going to be. Um, and, and when's the last time, and when we talk about rankings and why it's so important to be on page one of Google, when is the last time you went to page two or page three when you were looking up information? Yeah, what, what is it? I think it's like 20% of the people of that will actually go to the second page. And Yeah, it, it, it's not even that much. Yep. Um, and, and, and so, you know, that's why everybody wants to be on page one. Well, in order to be on page one of Google, Google needs to know that you're a real site, that you're offering information that's valuable to customers, and the only way you can do that is if you're offering content that's informational that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. So they go hand in hand, and um, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of SEO firms are now incorporating the social media aspects in with their standard SEO. And a lot of times they're looking for original content too and stuff. So exactly, yeah. yeah. Anything, um, anything. Thirty percent is the cutoff, so you can only have thirty percent of the same content going in your articles, and, and so it. it there, there is work. I mean, it. I, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's easy, but the, um, not that it's impossible to do either. And and that's why I say, uh, going back to keep it to the basics when you first get started. Pick one or two yep. <laughs> uh, uh, social media sites that you want to work with. Yep. <laughs> and um, what are, where are some great ways to grow and repeat um, referral business? Grow and repeat referral business. Um, we work with a lot of educators, um, that, that continuing education, that classes. And the biggest thing that I that I say about them is capturing those people that are in the class currently and then asking them, one of the first questions I like to ask is, what is your referral program? And sometimes they have referral programs and sometimes they don't. And that goes across the board. If you're if you if you don't automatically have a referral program, go ahead and set one up. Um, offer you can you can uh, you know, incentivize your your current customers by offering gift certificates. Um, you know, star. I've seen companies that use Starbucks gift cards, uh, ten dollars Starbucks gift cards. I've seen some salons that offer like free tube of lip 
lip gloss or lip balm you know, for, um, for their customers when they refer a friend, um, bringing in a friend, two-for-one specials, that type of thing, on like pedicures, manicures, that type of thing. Um, and, and I know that, uh, in fact, I think Felicia Brown and um, I think Eric Brown just wrote the, art, the new article in ABMP was talking about how you rebook at the end of a session when the client's done is asking them, you know, when would you like your next appointment to be and go ahead and set it up before they leave. So there's lots of little tips and tricks to, you know, to getting that repeat business um, uh, uh, also making sure, you know, those autoresponders that we talked about with emails, you know, keeping them engaged and keeping them um, with information. You're not, you're not just blasting out, hey, save $10 if, you know, I haven't seen you in a while, would love to see you again, but send it out with, um, say, hey, I, I know you have problems with lower back pain and I, I found these new yoga stretches. I thought that one might, might work for you. Um, that goes a long way to getting that repeat customer to come back in and go, oh, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, you know, <laughs> Stacy in a while. I need to come back mm. in there. So um, that's how you keep in touch and keep engaged with the clients, and that's how you'll get that repeat business. Then somebody on the chat asked, um, please ask about designing websites so they're easy for mobile um, phone users. Is there certain things that you have to do to make it a little bit more um, mobile phone friendly or? Absolutely. There's some websites that you can go to where it will adapt your website for mobile phone. Um, and whoever that person is, if they'll email me, um, I will send them the, the links because I don't have them handy, but I do know of a couple of places that I can uh, refer you off to. So just have them email me, sbeck at srbsolutions.net, and we'll get that for you. Okay, awesome. And... Um, how frequently should a business be updating their offers, too? You know, for, for websites, um, your offers once a month or even once a quarter. You know, one of the manufacturing companies I worked with, you know, we had, we had quarterly specials. And that, that works fine on a website. On more social media, um, a lot of companies go with weekly offers. Um, at the very least, changing them once a month. So that you know you're always keeping them fresh, even if it's kind of the same offer, but you're just kind of changing the wording again because of that expiration date. You really want to make sure that you are updating them a little more frequently on the social media sites than what you are on the websites. Yeah, because um, some people think they just need to do it every single day. You have something different just to keep it fresh in the person's mind. And <laughs> you know, if you're if you're tweeting about things, I, that's one thing, uh, but you don't want it to be offer, 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 offer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, think about your content. Think about what it is that you're putting out there, and uh, make sure that, that you are keeping it social, you're keeping it informational, and um, uh, you, you'll, have a, you'll have a much better response rate. And if somebody has a really strong social media campaign or uh, Facebook and everything else, do they really need to have a website, would you say? <laughs> I I really think so. Um, you know, 200 million searches daily on Google for information alone. Uh, why wouldn't you want to tap into that by at least having a website to capture some of that? Yeah. Uh, just it just doesn't make sense uh, why you wouldn't. I mean, you know, and websites don't have to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, there's. Um, AVMP, I know Massage Today offers, uh, uh, you know, web website builder, massage therapy builder, um, you know, so, so they, they can make them pretty affordable. Um, and, you know, just having a website, though, doesn't guarantee that you're going to get traffic, like we talked about, getting on page one of Google, um, having good keywords so that, so that you're ranking and that you can rank and compete. Um, we've helped so many clients that you know, had keywords that were so competitive, there was no way they were ever going to rank for them. And so, you know, having, talking to the right people so that you are getting the right keywords associated with your website is, it, it is invaluable for a lot of businesses. Um, so, yes, I, I, I would, I would definitely say have a, have a website. It's kind of like um, your business card. Right? If uh, why do you need business cards? 
you're in business. People know how to contact you. Why do you need a business card? Right? It's, it's, yep. a, it's a credi credibility issue. You know, and, and people like to see that you have a website, that you're that you're a real company. Um, they, they equate it in that manner. So I, I, again, I would just go back to it. Just doesn't make sense not to have it. <laughs> and and some some people believe too that let's say the word just massage, um, not even bother about that for keywords, just because again there's millions of sites out there that have that as keywords. So. You have to kind of itemize and find out what kind of sets you apart from everybody. So, absolutely, you know, just having massage again, you're going to compete against even even the the syndicates, like the big uh, national news. If they were to put something out that you know pertains to massage, um, you're competing against them, and they spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to rank for that term. Um, we we. In our business, we search for what we call long tail words, where it's three or four keywords put together in a phrase that customers are looking for. Um, and you do have to be careful. A lot of times people just start putting in keywords without doing any research. Uh, we worked with a client that was trying to rank for a particular word, and it's like, why are you doing that? They don't even have any searches. <laughs> and, well, when I put it in Google, it comes up a million searches. Well, yeah, but you got to evaluate. It goes beyond that. So there is, <laughs> there's programs that you put them in uh, that you look for because you, you really want to get down to your estimated daily clicks and find out, you know, uh, have a little more in-depth study uh, as to to make sure that those keywords or the keyword phrase is going to get you the results that you want, something that you could dominate easier, get on page one a lot easier, um, it will um, will help you get the results that you want. Um, and what I mean by that is massage could have over two million searches, somebody typing that in um, a month, but um, let's say massage therapy continuing education only has 30,000 clicks per month. Yep. Okay, and so it'll be a little easier for you to get ranked on something like that on that search term than say trying to trying to get ranked on massage. So. Yep, and and what I love too is just looking at my competitors and going in, going into the browser of their own website and just seeing what kind of keywords and everything that they're using too, and you know. Well, and and sometimes they're picking keywords that I, I have to scratch my head on, you know. Yep. <laughs> What are they doing? Uh, but that, that is one of the things we do. We always ask a, a, a potential client, a new client, who are your competitors? And we go on their website and we always look to see, you know, where it is that they're ranking. Um, and there are, some, there are some really cool sites that you can go on to where you can see which words that they're paying to get ranked for, um, which is, which is kind of kind of interesting. And it tells you exactly how much, um, how much traffic they're getting from those words. And what I love about YouTube is you don't have to put the commas in between things uh, for, for the tags and stuff. So, But most yeah. websites you do still, don't you? Or, yeah, 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 you do. Yeah, because I, I, it's so much easier. So, <laughs> <laughs> And um, um, do you think print ads um, are a thing of the past? Well, I, you know, again, you, you got to go where your customers are. I think in some... Um, you know, we do know the latest studies came out that, you know, people only believe about, 14% of the people only believe what's in print and the ads, mm -hmm. uh, which is, which is a, which is a scary thought for the print, <laughs> the, the, the magazines out there. Um, in some instances, in some markets, their customers are online and they're online, uh, abundantly in other markets like, Funeral home, for instance, we, we've worked with a couple of funeral home insurance companies. Funeral home directors are not searching on the net. We still had to use what I call old school or print media to, um, to, 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 to capture the market and to get them interested, to get them online. Um, so I, but it's changing. And, and, and um, you know, chiropractic seems to be another one that, and, and, I, and I don't want any hate mail because of this, but, uh, you know, trying to find chiropractors on Facebook, you know, there's not a lot of them on there where, you know, you've got over, uh, you've got a lot of uh, more of a pool to pull from for massage therapists that are on Facebook. Um, so you really have to, 
like I said, go where the customers are, um, and, and 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 be aware of that, and be aware of your market and, and how they're spending how they're spending their time. If you are a chiropractor who's looking for consumers, you know, a target market to pull in, it makes sense to be on social media. So it doesn't make sense to run an ad. Uh, in, in magazines, general magazines and such, um, you know, it, it would make more sense to put their put their dollars into Facebook ads, um, wh where the bulk of their c consumers are at. Um, but uh, but still, for reaching specific demographics or specific niches, that's you really have to pay attention and do some research before you start investing thousands of dollars or making that decision to pull thousands of dollars from a, say, you know, a, a major trade publication. Um, uh, does that make sense? Yep. Or, yeah, okay. Yep, and then also marketing online, it seems easier to track to help. Would you say it's pretty uh, accurate then? or Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it, but even then, you, you got to make sure that you've got a good enough system set up so that, so that you can track it. Um, you know, you're... Yes, your online ads, everything's trackable to a, to a point, but then you've got to make sure that the website is able to, whether it's source codes, promo codes, discount codes, however it is that you're going to measure the, the, the money coming in and that you can link it together. Um, you know, on, on the Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, you can get the reports that are going to tell you how many how many people clicked through um, but then you still and, and the Google Analytics does a good job if you've got it set up on your which you should on your websites uh, to tell you where where the traffic's coming in from but then you also need to have a measurable way within your system um, to to track it to um, so how many how many of those people actually purchased and do you do much with affiliate programs at all or we do we've been adding them here and there we've we work with uh, like the FSMTA. We have an affiliate, uh, LMT Pro. We have an affiliate. Um, there's some independent uh, in independent contractors that we do affiliate marketing. Um, we we are you talking about SRV Solutions being an affiliate for someone else? Or um, do you help set up affiliate programs at all? Or we can um, because it's pretty easy to do, and uh, it's just a matter of. Um, Yes, I'll just I'll just leave it at that because it'll get into a whole other conversation. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes we can accommodate. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then, um, um, in the past, I've had this affiliate program um, that somebody wanted me to be a part of, but there's no way for to, me to track the stats. It's just like, how can I be sure that um, I'm getting what I? I mean, it's, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, you can you can can track them up to a certain point and then they should be able to allow you um, <clears throat> allow you information or allow you access to some of their analytics so then you can track them all the way through um, but yeah it, 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 it does get to be a little tricky if you don't have a way or if they don't have an easy system by which to track it but yeah we we do have easy ways of, of following it all the way through okay okay yeah, because so many people, I think, want to do the affiliate thing. Just um, it's it's easier advertising, I would say, too, so they don't have to pay it for the initial advertising. It, it, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, just it, the biggest thing is is just making sure you've got codes and the ways the ways that you can track them. Um, and and you know, some companies just they have they have older systems or out of date systems, and they're just not able to do it. So. Uh, with those people, we keep uh, we keep track of it separately, and we run it. We run the affiliate program separate on on our own system. And so, uh, what kind of services do you offer? That kind of a, a recap of everything that you you offer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we, well, we, we only got a few more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> one minute. No. <laughs> redesign. We build um, custom WordPress sites. We have auto-responding systems so that you can auto-respond either by text or by email. Uh, we also do have, because of my husband's 15 years experience in the print industry, we handle a lot of print and mail as well. Um, we also do to 
manage all the majors like uh, Facebook, Twitter, and um, <laughs> YouTube, yeah. and LinkedIn, managing those accounts, doing posts for people. Um, I also do a handful of independent retainer consulting, marketing consulting. Um, I don't have a whole lot of extra time with the business, but uh, so that's why I have to limit it to a handful of people at a time that I'm uh, on retainer for, for general marketing. Uh, with the years of experience in in mas the massage industry, so I, you know, I, I there's a lot of information that I can share and that I can work with you on for. Um, uh, distributors, manufacturers, yeah. <laughs> massage therapists. <laughs> and so people can just pay for just um, certain portions and stuff then, right? Yeah. Absolutely. We have yeah. it all chunked out, so to speak, or yeah. we have the big packages. So um, because a lot, of, a lot of people that we work with are on a budget and they don't have, you know, they don't have $100,000 to spend on marketing. So we do a little bit at a time and we evaluate, we go through and do in-depth analysis with them and help them really get focused on what it is, their, clearly their vision of what, of what they want to achieve. And um, any other things you're going to be adding in the future and stuff? We do. We have a brand new, it's, it's our premium um, Facebook page where we're adding the websites to Facebook so it looks exactly like your, well, not exactly, but it's pretty darn close to your website on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we also have a YouTube subscriber program that, that uh, will get you new YouTube subscribers. And... Um, that's about all I want to talk about right now. Yeah. <laughs> but you have other things in the works, though, right? We do. Oh, okay. it's always. There's always something new coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're beta testing a, a, a coupon thing, kind of like Groupon. Oh, whoa. Did I see yeah, that? Yeah, out loud, even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm and I love your Facebook landing pages and stuff. They're beautiful. Thank you. Yep, yep. And um, I I got a message not too long ago on Facebook that they're gonna take away some of those apps and things like that. Is that gonna be a problem, or you you know how to manage and? We're um, we're on a secured. Um, our all of our um, apps that that we currently offer are on secured servers, so you don't have to worry about that. But I but I know you know I've been wondering, kind of sitting back and watching because I, I don't know that everyone's set up for that. And um, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of months. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And what's the best way for people to get a hold of you then? Well, if they'll if if they'll like us on our Facebook page, SRV Solutions, that's a great way. Um, email me sbeck at srvsolutions.net. Um, they're welcome to visit our 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 uh, website, srvsolutions.net, and um, and they can um, yeah, that that would probably be about the easiest. We can. Find us on Twitter. They can, we're, we're everywhere. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and working with a lot of the big names in the business, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, it's been a pleasure tonight, Stephanie. And well, thank you, Ryan. Yeah. It's, it's always nice working with you. I think you're doing a wonderful thing for the industry, and just can't thank you enough for everything that you do. Yep. For thank you very much, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Good night, everybody.